So the news surrounding the Los Angeles Lakers has been all over the place this offseason, but there's one thing that has remained very, very constant for the Los Angeles Lakers and their organization, and that's if Rajon Rondo leaves, this team has to find a replacement level guard at worst for Rajon Rondo. A lot of people have mixed feelings on Rondo and his consistency and what exactly he brought to the table. I'm here to assure you that this Lakers team is probably still a very good to great team without Rondo, but he's the type of player that can take you to another level despite not being a current star in the NBA. I have a weird theory surrounding players that were once stars but are no longer as good as they once were but still pretty solid to pretty good. And that theory is, is that these players are great players to have because while they may not give you star performances every night, occasionally you'll see flashes of what they were once able to do on a nightly basis. Things like basketball IQ don't necessarily go away. You can never have too many high IQ guys on the basketball floor. IQ can be what separates a player like Marvin Bagley from becoming maybe a player like Anthony Davis. The athleticism and the talent is there, but if they don't have the IQ, they may not put it all together. And that's a very extreme example. So actually, you know, don't go ahead and quote me on that, but I'm sure you guys understand what I'm saying. LeBron James is an absolute freak athlete, but if you ask around the NBA, they'll tell you what makes LeBron James, LeBron James goes far beyond his athleticism. He's one of the smartest players in the game. He's incredibly cerebral. Basketball is a very cerebral game. And at times, I feel like the mental and the cognitive aspect of the game are far overlooked. This video, we have a lot to talk about. The Lakers possibly acquiring another star. The Thunder being content and ready to trade Chris Paul. And what can we expect from the Los Angeles Lakers going forward? Before we go any further, be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications. You will not want to miss another Get Like Coop video. And that's facts once we hit about 200,000 subscribers we're going to do a merch drop and we might retire that's facts so that's going to be something really og i'm going to have a pretty awesome intro coming soon to the channel i think you guys are going to enjoy it i noticed a lot of you guys like the interaction we have with premieres well if you guys truly do like that be sure to follow my stream my stream is going to be in the description below i interact with everybody in the chat we talk basketball we play games it's a fun time also, if you like football content, be sure to subscribe to my football channel, Red Zone Coop, coming soon. Lastly, if you guys enjoy the content, be sure to like the video. It tells me that you guys really do enjoy my content. This season, what the Los Angeles Lakers were able to do is nothing short of spectacular. They put together a championship roster relatively fast, and the chemistry issues that once surrounded this team were seemingly no more. Hey, I guess winning really does change everything. But of course, in the NBA, it's sort of a common idea that if you're not getting better, then you might be getting worse because everybody around you is trying to get better. They're trying to take that next step and win the NBA championship. I feel like the Los Angeles Lakers are a very smart organization, and it's a team that wants to get better. Now, there's been no confirmation of Rondo leaving, but if he truly did leave, it would be a blow. And if he went to the Clippers, that blow would hit all the harder because I think Rondo really would make the Clippers a much better team. Now, it's no secret that the Lakers want to add another star going forward. There's not going to be a better time to bring this up, so I'm just going to bring it up right now. August 7th, 2019, Kyle Kuzma said, I am capable of being the Lakers' third star with LeBron James and Anthony Davis. I really don't think Kuzma was wrong. To be fair, Kuzma had a very solid season, 15 points or so, 36% from three. Hard to be mad at the season Kuzma had, especially being a questionable fit alongside LeBron and AD. But the consistency wasn't always there. And if you're going to be a star in the NBA, you gotta be consistent. It's what separates the good from the great. Okay, so check this out. A few days ago, there was a report that the Lakers wanted to acquire a star guard this season. When Horst revealed LeBron James and company are in talks with Rajon Rondo's replacement. This is crazy. I actually agree with some of the points that Chris Broussard made in this segment. 
Rondo's played with better players than Kawhi. He's not afraid to get in anybody's face. He's got respect from guys because of his championship. And remember what Kawhi said after they lost to Denver. We need to improve our basketball IQ. Rajon Rondo, if he went to the Clippers, he wouldn't have to move. Winning another ring with another team makes his resume look all the better. If Rondo goes to the Clippers, he's also probably their starting point guard. And look, let's be real, Rondo has to see some of the deals going around the league. It's been a while since he's got a big bag. You have to assume he wants to get paid. Hey, chances are maybe he goes to the highest bidder. You put together a season like Rondo did, then you get a lot of options. Now, I love when a story comes together, and what I'm going to tell you guys is going to sound scary, honestly, because the Lakers are already a great team. When Windhorse sat down with the silver screen and roll, they had an interesting combo about how the Lakers could possibly improve their roster going forward. Windhorse was reported saying, there's a deal out there for them for another guard. That would be interesting. I'll see if they actually go forward with it. It's a guard on the last year of his contract, who was great last year for his team, and that team may be looking to move him. That would be interesting. Now, Chris Paul immediately comes to mind. Phenomenal for the Oklahoma City Thunder, but who knows what direction the Oklahoma City Thunder will be going in going forward. It would make a lot of sense for them to cash out on Chris Paul, trade Chris Paul to a possible contender, and get some assets back. The Thunder are already a team that is loaded with assets. There's a small chance we may be able to see a deal in good faith regarding Chris Paul and the Thunder because I think these two are on amazing terms. Remember when Steve Nash was dealt to the Los Angeles Lakers? Well, it may not exactly be like that, but you guys understand where I'm coming from. Next year, Chris Paul is under contract. The following year, he has a player option. The player option is for 40 million. Chris Paul actually said before, there's no chance that I'm opting out of 40 million. I can't say I blame Chris. Now there's another guard in New Orleans that goes by the name of Drew Holiday. Very good friend with Anthony Davis. He's a California native and I know he would love playing back in Cali. While I think the Pelicans will seriously consider shopping Drew this off season, I'd more so like to see them trade with the Denver Nuggets, possibly take one of their young great players, but that might not be entirely realistic. Also, what might not be realistic is I'm not sure the Lakers could put together a competitive package for Drew Holiday that would make the Pelicans bite because I feel like there's kind of been some animosity between the Lakers and the Pelicans organizations in the past. And even though the Pelicans would want to do right by Drew Holiday, a player that is stuck by them despite massive uncertainty in, in the organization, I'm not sure they would be willing to deal him to Los Angeles, though I hope they would be. The fun begins. Chris Paul reportedly prefers his next basketball home to be in Los Angeles or New York. As much as I want the New York Knicks to go through an organic rebuild and rebuild through the draft, I think getting Chris Paul would be amazing. I know Chris Paul is getting up there in age. Maybe he doesn't have a ton of years left, but when you're a team that's been as bad as the New York Knicks, sometimes getting a player that can help other players realize their potential can go a very long way and help establish a basketball culture in NY that we haven't seen in some time. I think Chris Paul's basketball impact is that big. I think he could help out the Knicks in a major way. If he helps RJ realize his true potential, develop as a leader, nobody's going to hate the move in New York. They're going to love it. Then imagine if the Knicks were able to get another piece. Now, Chris Paul to the Lakers, I don't even need to talk about it. Give this team the championship. Chris Paul, Prime Anthony Davis, LeBron James, the lobs are going to be unreal. They already are. I propose to you guys a quick hypothetical. If Chris Paul went to the Los Angeles Clippers, are they a better team than the Lakers? And is that team winning the championship? with CP3. So the full quote on the situation is I've been told by a league source that Chris Paul prefers his next basketball home to either be in LA or NY. Los Angeles is where he resides full time and that has created some leverage 
in the ongoing negotiation between the sides. Nick's film school, Jonathan, wrote, I'm also told there's a deal on the table that is comfortable from Presti's perspective and the ball is in Leon Rose's court. As a Pelicans fan, I want nothing more than Chris Paul to play for a winner. I want to see this guy go out. I want to see him win a championship. But at the same time, if he's able to help the Knicks find themselves, I think that's something you can't really put a dollar figure on. In the comments below, let me know what you want the Lakers and the Knicks to do regarding Chris Paul. Click the video on the screen right now. I'm Get Like Coop, and I'll see you guys in the next one.